Hey everybody, Sammy here at SFI Sports Cards, back with another video. Today is January 12th. Now, we hear people often say how great players were, and I've said it myself plenty of times. However, do we just look at numbers, uh, read baseball facts and lore, or have we really sat down and watched them play? Either live on TV or or going to the ballpark, or through old footage. I was born in 1977, so I wasn't alive when a lot of these guys like Willie and Mickey, or Duke and Henry, or Stan and Jackie were playing. So, you know, I like to watch old footage of older World Series games or playoff games when I have the free time. I've been watching the 1965 World Series, Dodgers versus Twins. Right now I've watched Game 1, Don Drysdale versus Mud Kent Grant, and Game 2, Jim Cott versus Sandy Koufax. Now I do know the outcome of the series, but watching everything unfold and experiencing the story being told is something totally different. Uh, and some things really stood out to me. First, I was amazed by the athleticism shown by these players. You know, I nearly jumped out of my chair watching diving catches and sliding catches. And I thought, you know, some of these balls had no chance of being caught. Also, you know, they were doing shifts back then. And, you know, this is 1965. I was surprised that some players wore batting gloves. You know, it was common to wear only one back then. But seeing, you know, Tony Oliva, Bobby Allison, you know, wearing one glove. And it said that Bobby Thompson uh, wore batting gloves, you know, all the way back in 1949. And I read that Ken Harrelson really made it popular. He wore a glove just to protect blisters on his hand. But there were great players in this World Series. You know, Tony Oliva, Harmon Killebrew, Earl Batty, uh, Bob Allison, Soil Oversize, and uh, for the Twins. He was actually MVP that year. You know, the Dodgers had Willie Davis, Maury Wills, Johnny Roseboro, Gilliam, and, the, you know, the pitchers I mentioned. Uh, but it's amazing to see these guys in actual motion and not just on a baseball card. And another thing, um, I'm sure that most people out there have had some experience listening to Vin Scully call a game. It was amazing listening to him call a game from that time period. Just so detailed and knowledgeable, painting the picture of where players were positioned, you know, calling the action as it happens. You know, he's just a master of bringing the games to homes around the country. Uh, no commentary is wasted. Everything has a purpose. Makes you appreciate how the game was played back then. Uh, he even mentioned Sandy Koufax's elbow troubles and how he had to change his delivery. You know, even on the next year, Koufax would have one of his best seasons in 1966, and it would be his last due to those elbow troubles that Scully mentioned a season before. And, you know, mentioning Koufax, just watching him work and... It was so gratifying watching it. You know, the pitching patterns and his game plan going at hitters. And that wicked curveball he had. It was really, you know, that 12-6 to 6 bender that you see on, you know, some pitchers today. But it's, um, it's just amazing to see from uh, one of the guys that really crafted that pitch to make it uh, what it is today, even. But I did want to mention Tony Oliva real quick. 
Um, here is the famous 1986 Turn Back the Clock, which has his... You know, that, that would be a 1964 Tops, but that is not what the card looks like. The actual card is this. Now it says Rookie Stars. This is not his first card, though. He did have a uh, 63 Tops card the year before. But um, he was a stud. No question. I'm a firm believer he could hit anybody. Righty, lefty, didn't matter. What I saw was his athleticism and discipline. He had such a grasp for the strike zone. And also an underrated defender as well. Pretty good speed too. I'm going to show a short clip. Uh, this is a catch he had off Dodger great Willie Davis. It's about one minute. Um, here is Minnesota's Ray Scott with the call. Okay, now, this was the third out of the game, and something I was not expecting whatsoever. Shows the effort, determination, athletic abilities of Oliva. The other thing I notice is the chain-linked fence in a right field. Now, I played high school ball with this type of fencing, and it's no fun out there going back on balls like you saw in that clip. You know, many times I left the ball field with scrapes and cuts on me from that fence in high school. Um, but it's just, you know, little things like that I pay attention to. Like, obviously, there's nothing like that in today's game. But, um, yeah, just little things you notice in these clips when you watch them. Now, I'm going to show you another clip. This will be... Sandy Koufax versus Tony Oliva. Now this is Oliva's second full year in the majors. He already led the AL in hits and average in his first two years. First player to lead the league in average in his first two seasons. This clip's about two minutes. I mean, if you want to skip ahead, that's okay. But I love watching these at-bats. At you know, the best against the best when watching these games. So, again, here's Ray Scott with the call.
own idea as to his own strike zone. Okay, and now as you saw, he fell behind in the count, but never really chased or went out of the strike zone. You know, being on the ropes and then at bat against the great Sandy Koufax in the World Series, no less, seems pressure didn't get to him. And his career numbers, 13 Playoff games, he would hit 314 and slug 588. And another thing I noticed, you know, I was watching this for the first time. I had no thoughts of Oliva even attempting to go to second on that play. Which means he was busting it out of the box immediately. And um, he does have uh, some speed to him. I never really thought... Uh, that about him, I know he had some uh, leg injuries throughout his career. Now, Oliva is outpaced at a number standpoint by fellow Cubans, Rafael Palmero, Tony Perez, Minnie Minoso. But out of the four, including Oliva, he is the only one to capture a batting title, did it three times. He led his league in hits five times. And the only one of those four to end his career batting over 300. Manilso just missed out at 299. But, you know, numbers are numbers. The only thing holding him back was uh, healthy legs. Knee injuries hampered him throughout his career. Um, but I kind of wanted to make this video um cuz actually I just picked up this car here the 71 Olivo pretty nice for a black border card now this is the tops I have not found the OPG yet which I prefer the OPG backs to these ones from tops but I mean, what did this cost me? I don't know. Seven bucks, I think. Looked really nice. And I wanted, you know, a player that uh, doesn't get mentioned too often. It does here and there in our community, but I um, thought it was a great one. So pick that one up. Uh, but in closing, I just want to say, you know, if you have the time, check out some old playoff games. You know, it did take me more than one sitting to get through these games, but uh, well worth it. Now, I'm intrigued to see how the rest of this series goes and how it plays out. And I said, I do know the outcome. I know who does eventually win, but... Um, it's great to just actually watch the games and, you know, baseball with, you know, playoff series, there is a story that does unfold. It doesn't, you know, just take one game. So if you have any suggestions for me on any past games that I should check out, you know, let me know in the comments. Now, I really hope you like this video um, and I hope to see people return to the channel to watch this kind of stuff, you know, I won't be doing these videos all the time, but, uh, yeah, I love incorporating my cards into, you know, the history and stories of baseball. So, again, I hope you liked it. You know, I will be talking to you guys soon, so be safe out there. Take care.